Okay, hi everyone. Um, so we're going to kick off um, the second talk now. Um, and um, the goal of this talk is to show you how PyKX can be used by um, Python developers to massively speed up their workflows and applications. So unlike other solutions which have come before, um, PyKX takes this Python first approach and exposes the full power of KDB. So um, the main thing here is just um, importing PyKX as KX. And um, yeah, maybe the first thing to say is that with PyKX we have the potential to run Q um, under Python. Um, so I'm just going to run you through um, some simple um, Q. I'm going to load an HDB and list some tables. So now I've got a quote table and a trade table. Um, I'm going to count um, the number of rows in a quote table. Um, and we see there's about um, 200 million um, quotes here. This is just one day of tech data from the New York Stock Exchange. Um, and then I'm going to run a query against this data. So I'm going to um, just pull out a symbol um, where um, just a, a single symbol from the, the, the quotes. And you can see that just returns in an instance. So if you're a quant, this is just what you expect, that instantaneous um, power of KDB. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to store this result here in a table. So this is a PyKX table. Um, so this is a, uh, the PyKX uh, table is a class in, in PyKX. And, and this is just uh, an object here with 11 million rows. And um, here are the first five rows of that table. Um, so that's a little bit just to get us started on running um, Q under Python. Um, but one of, the, one, of the, one of the most important features of PyKX is that we have this um, shared memory space between Q and Python. So what this means is I can transfer data um, from um, the Q memory space to the Python memory space, often at zero copy. Um, so what I'm going to do here is, is transfer a float vector in PyKX with a million floats to a NumPy array, and that's just going to be instantaneous. So it takes um, 28 microseconds, and basically this is just a constant time operation. Um, uh, defining the Python obje object by reference in a pointer to the Q memory space. Um, so we've got this way to transfer data from Q to Python um, really, really fast. Um, and likewise, we can go backwards um, from a NumPy array to a PyKX float vector. And that's um, similarly very fast. Um, so basically, everywhere it is possible, we're transferring data from the Q memory space to the Python memory space um, using these zero, zero copy transfers. Okay, so that's a bit of the, the background on, on PyKX. Next thing I want to talk about are ways in which a Python developer can um, manipulate the PyKX table. So how can a Python developer interact with this PyKX table? And something which is, is brand new to this release, which we're really excited about, is a pandas-like API um, for the PyKX table. So what this means is if we take the table um, from above, um, from, the, from the query we ran earlier, um, I can just um, uh, reference the metadata from that table just like you would um, from pandas. So here are the columns from the table, here is the shape of the table, and the data types um, from the table. So that's just what you'd expect from a pandas data frame, only this is a PyKX table. But the most interesting thing so far that we've implemented, I think, is the ability to index into the PyKX table using the same syntax as pandas. Um, so here, um, I'm just going to define a data frame associated to the table, um, so the same data in a data frame. And I'm going to run a, a simple um, pandas query where I select um, five columns, the time, the ask, the bid, the ask size, and the bid size, um, where the spread is greater than $1. Um, so I'm uh, just extracting this data from the pandas data frame. Um, and, that, um, and then I'm just going to do the exact same thing where I've swapped out the pandas data frame and swapped in a PyKX table. Um, so here's a PyKX table. And um, I'm just running the exact same query on the PyKX table, and it's an order of magnitude faster. So I've replaced DF with tab, done the exact same thing, and I'm seeing speed ups. Just for simple queries like this, we're seeing speed ups of like 30 times. Um, so this um, shows how you can swap out the pandas data frame put in the PyKX table and see massive acceleration in your performance. Um, 
So that's our Pandas API for interacting with PyCAX tables. We can also run ANSI SQL queries against um, PyCAX tables. So if you've got a developer in your team that knows SQL but isn't familiar with KDB, they can um, query the table um, and interrogate all this data at speed. Um, so here's a, here's a SQL query which I've run against the table um, returning the first five rows. Um, so that's um, Pandas API, SQL queries, and finally, we have an API for QSQL, where we support um, uh, like a Pythonic um, interface for things like select, update, exec, um, and all the keywords like uh, upsert, insert, um, delete, and yeah, we've got um, this intuitive um, Pythonic API um, for um, uh, QSQL. So here I'm running an update command where I add a spread column, um, and there's a certain where clause, um, so it's all in Python. Um, so that's, that's three kind of ways that you can interact with the PyKX table. You've got this Pandas API, you've got SQL, and you've got QSQL. Um, the next, I'm just going to mention two more features um, of PyKX, which I think are really cool. Um, so one is the ability to run a magic, a magic Q magic command. So this is a, a Python notebook, but I'm going to execute this Q code um, here. So this is great if you like to experiment and um, build workflows in Python notebooks. You can just swap between Q and um, Python, um, so here's a, a simple Q command. We also have the ability to execute this um, remotely, so you can add a flag for a host and a port and a password, stuff like that, and um, execute these commands on some remote Q process. And that brings us on to IPC. Um, so um, one thing where we, we used to have a package called QPython, um, which where you could execute um, uh, Q code remotely on a Q server, and um, PyKX just um, completely replaces this, um, does exactly the same thing, and has more features. Um, so here I'm running a, a synchronous query on localhost um, 5000 and getting the results back. And you can also run asynchronous queries, which return Python future objects, which you can await on. Um, so that's it um, from our brief introduction. Um, hopefully you're starting to see the potential to use PyKX to really supercharge your Python code, um, speed things up massively, use much smaller memory footprint. Um, so I'm gonna hand over to Nathan now, who's gonna walk through a use case. Okay, uh, good afternoon, um, and thanks to Andrew for that great overview of what we can do with PyKX. Um, today, today I'm just gonna be going through a, a PyKX overview in the context of a real world example. I'm just going to be showing you how you can use PyKX to accelerate your Python workflow. So the example I'm going to be using in this demo is a, is a classic finance example where I'm going to be playing the role of a stockbroker. So stockbrokers often perform something called transaction cost analysis, or TCA for short. So transaction cost analysis helps to measure the cost associated with trading an asset, and it helps us to understand how these costs compare to the market average. So for example, when you buy something from Amazon, the price you pay is, is based on the actual price of the product, shipping, and maybe some handling fees. So TCA helps to break down the price of a stock into a benchmark price of the stock, any slippage, which I'm gonna talk more about later, and then brokerage fees and commissions. So from a broker perspective, TCA is useful to demonstrate the regulatory commitment to executing at the best price for our clients. And it helps us to provide transparency for our clients on the costs associated with making trades so they can help to optimize their trading algorithms. So for a broker to do these calculations, we're gonna need three different data sets. And I'm gonna read these into Pandas data frames. So we're gonna have some quote data, which is basically a list of the, the prices which market participants are willing to buy or sell a stock at. So it's gonna be listed by your bid and ask price here, and we have nine million of these such records. We're also gonna have some trade data. This is gonna be a list of trades that occurred in the market, but didn't occur on our brokerage platform. So we have 900,000 of these. And then we also have some execution data, which is gonna be the trades which occurred on our platform, which we as the broker executed against. So here we have 20,000 of these uh, such a, um, trades. So I'm also gonna read these into PyKX tables. Um, and I'm gonna brush over this, but it's gonna be used for the comparison later on uh, in the demo. 
So the initial analysis I'm going to perform is going to be based on that slippage factor that I mentioned earlier. So slippage is the difference between the price that the stock is executed at, or that you purchase the stock at, and then our benchmark price of the stock. And it's made up of a few main factors. So it's going to be the bid ask spread of the stock, the volatility of the stock, liquidity in the stock, the market impact of your trades, and then some other factors. So I'm going to try to visualize the, the first three of these um, over the course of a trading day for two specific uh, sims in our data set. So the first of these is going to be volatility. And one cool thing about PyKX is that we can use, uh, is because it's based in the Q memory space, we can actually use Q functions, um, or call Q functions using it. So so this is great for organizations which have a strong foundation of functions built up in queue which they may want to integrate with using PyKX. So you can see here I've defined my get volatility function which is going to get the volatility of a stock based on the bid and ask prices. And if you look below I'm calling this function using PyKX supplying it with the bid and ask columns. So before running this function, you can see that I'm using the pandas API to select a subset of the rows from our table um, so that we can have that. So we have the specific symbol that we're looking for, and we also have uh, the time range, which is set to half nine to four o'clock, which is standard trading day. Um, and by the way, I'm, I'm saving these into a function for now, but I'll, I'll call this function later on during plotting. So the other thing uh, we can do with PyKX is we can also integrate with Python functions. So we can define and use these Python functions as we would with the Q functions. So here I have a function which defines the move, moving average over a spread vector, where the spread is given by the ask price minus the bid price. So I've defined this function, and in order to use it with PyKX, I need to convert it to a Q function, which is done using uh, this syntax here. And so as you can see, I'm able to use this function as I would just a normal Q function, passing in the bid, the ask, and then uh, moving average size here. So as, as Andrew alluded to earlier, we have a, the QSQL API, which is a very Pythonic syntax. So it takes in the table that we want to, um, to select from. It takes in a dictionary of the, the resulting columns we want in our data set. And then it also have a where clause, which is a list of conditions, which is going to be the same as above with the Pandas API. So the third thing I'm just going to show here is the liquidity. And liquidity has a strong correlation to trading volume, where trading volume is given by the number of shares traded multiplied by the share price. So here I'm going to actually use the QSQL API, or sorry, the SQL uh, API to visualize this. So Using the SQL API, I can actually define, uh, use pure SQL code and write everything in SQL to get, uh, calculate the trading volume over 10 minute windows throughout the trading day. And uh, so then I can actually visualize these three things by calling each of the functions and running some plots. And you can see that on the left hand side, as the volatility increases, the spread actually also increases too. We can also free, see from the left hand side that the, the volatility and spread tend to increase in, and at the start and the end of the day. And this correlates well with the right hand side plot which shows that the trading volume is elevated at the open and close of the market. The, yeah, like, so generally, generally traders will help to minim, try to minimize their market exposure overnight um, and hence there'll be a lot of buying and selling at the end of the day um, and that's why that's elevated there. Um, and this, the, the reason I'm sorry I'm showing these plots is just to show how easy it is to integrate the PyKX tables with matplotlib and other Python functions to be able to visualize these so easily um, as you would with just a normal Python data frame. So moving on to an experiment then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare how, how we work with pandas and how we work with PyKX and compare the, the time and the memory usage for each um, with using transaction cost analysis as the example. So here, this is going to be based around the slippage factor that I mentioned earlier and the benchmark price. So this, this benchmark price can be anything, or not anything, anything, but there's a number of different choices that you can choose, but here I'm just going to be using the arrival mid price. 
So before I get into the details of the comparison of Pike AX and Pandas, I'm just going to run through what exactly what the exact calculation I'm going to be running here. So first, we, the first step to this is we need to join the tables, the quotes, and the execution tables, and this is done using something called an as of join. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the as of join, but the as of join will join the executions to the quotes, taking the latest quote as of the execution time. So in the little example here, we have an execution at 2 p.m. and we have quotes at 158, 159, and 201. So the as of join will join our execution to the quotes table uh, to the 159 row because this is the latest quote that occurred as of the 2 p.m. execution time. So you can see here in this line, I'm joining the two tables, the execs and the quotes, based on the sim and the time using this as of, as of join. So once the tables are joined, we can then compute the, the arrival mid prices, the difference between the arrival mid and the uh, executed price, and then also our slippage factor, which is measured in basis points. So this gives us a resulting PyKX table, which has our three additional columns here. We have our, our executions here, and then also we have our quotes. So this is our join table and it allows us then to do some analysis with this. So one thing we as a broker we might want to do is we might want to measure which venue has the lowest slippage and then as a result which venue gives uh, the best price for our clients. So when we plot the three venues that we have in our data set oh, using uh, the volume as the x-axis, we can see that, that for venue one and two they have a much lower slippage than venue three. And this might tell us something uh, and make us, we might make decisions based on this to say we're only going to trade on venue one and two and not venue three if we can. So to then run the comparison of PyKX and Pandas, I'm just going to record the, the memory and record the time it takes for each to be done and just to store these in variables which I can use for analysis later on. So here I'm just going to visualize the, the time so, as you can see, the, it, it, there's a massive speed up when using PyKX over Pandas. And this, like this is this, uh, 85 times X speed improvement from using PyKX over Pandas for just this, this small cal calculation. This is, um, like Q obviously has a lot of uh, optimizations within it. And by exposing these to a Python developer, we allow them to be able to to make use of this, uh, these capabilities of Q on large data sets, but all using the Python syntax. We can similarly uh, visualize the memory. And again, we can see that the PyKX shows a similarly massive decrease in the amount of memory consumed um, over the course of the calculation. So like an engine is to a car, Q and KDB are the power behind PyKX. And using PyKX over Pandas is like driving a Ferrari over driving a Fiat. <laughs>